Hi guys, we are here again in the beautiful city of Rome, the Diocese of the Pope. Uh, check also our other videos of our related vacation here in Rome. Pero in this video, ating pag-usapan isang Catholic belief na related pa rin sa Pope dahil nasa Rome tayo. Uh, the dogma of papal infallibility. It's sad to say na madaming non-Catholics ang nami-misunderstood this particular Catholic belief. So hopefully, ma-address natin ng baigi ito in this video. But before we start, please don't forget to subscribe to our channel, click the notification bell, like this video, and share this video with your friends. Share this event with your non-Catholic friends para naman makita nila kung gaano kaganda ang turo sa loob ng Catholic Church. So maraming misconception about papal infallibility and most of the time dito sa mga misconceptions gumagawa ng mga maling arguments ang mga non-Catholics laban sa Pope. So ating simula ng listahan. Like misconception number one, everything the Pope says is infallible. A simple answer to this argument is that no, not everything a Pope says is infallible. Tao pa din ang Pope. And he gives his opinion that are sometimes contrary to the Catholic belief. Not everything the Pope says is infallible. He can give his opinion on certain issues and sometimes his opinions can be wrong, just like any ordinary person. So the Pope is not infallible in everything he says. Misconception number two, the Pope can invent new doctrines. Again, the answer to this question is no. Papal infallibility is a negative gift from the Holy Spirit. Ano ibig sabihin ito? It means the Pope cannot invent or proclaim new doctrines out of thin air. The Catholic Church has a deposit of faith. This deposit of faith are found in sacred tradition and sacred scriptures. Through papal infallibility, the Pope can only dogmatize any Catholic teachings that are found in the deposit of faith. Yung pagdodogmatize of certain teachings means that particular dogmatized teaching is indeed a Catholic belief binding to all Christians and it's free from error. So again, the Pope cannot invent new doctrines. Misconception number three, everything the Pope says is a Catholic belief. This misconception is a combination of the previous two misconceptions. Pero of course, the answer to this misconception is a big no. Hindi po lahat ng sasabihin or sinasabi ng Pope is a Catholic belief. The Pope can talk about his favorite sports, favorite sports teams, or favorite food, or even favorite politician. But those opinions of the Pope are not Catholic belief. So now that we have answered some of the most common misconceptions regarding papal infallibility, let us go straight to the topic of this video. What is papal infallibility? Papal infallibility is a gift from the Holy Spirit. So paragraph 891 of the Catechism of the Catholic Church, ito ang ating mababasa. The Roman Pontiff, head of the College of Bishops, enjoys this infallibility in virtue of his office when a supreme pastor and teacher of all the faithful who confirms his brethren in the faith, he proclaims by a definitive act a doctrine pertaining to faith or morals. So according to the Catechism of the Catholic Church, the Roman Pontiff or the Pope, by his virtue of his office, ano yung office? Ito yung office ni Peter na siyang unang in ni Jesus to lead his church. Kung pinanood nyo yung unang video ko, makikita nyo sa link na yan. We can see from Matthew 16:18 that Jesus chose Peter to lead his visible church. And that the gates of hell shall not prevail against his church. Jesus gave Peter and his office the gift to prevent hell from overcoming the church of Christ. It is from this office of Peter 
that the Pope is exercising his gift of infallibility. Pero even with this gift of infallibility, na e-exercise lang ng Pope ang gift na ito under very specific conditions. And all conditions must be met. I repeat, for this gift of faithful infallibility to be exercised, there are specific conditions that must be met and all these conditions must be met. Pag isa sa mga ito ay hindi na meet, then hindi na exercise ang people infallibility. So, ano-ano yung mga conditions na ito? Condition number one, the Pope intends to teach. With this condition, the Pope makes it very clear that he has the intention to teach or to impart a teaching of this church. Condition number two, the Pope invokes his teaching office or from the very office of Peter as the leader of the Catholic Church. With this condition, the Pope makes it very clear that he is teaching from the chair of Peter or ex cathedra. Condition number three, he is going to teach on matters of faith and morals. With this condition, the Pope makes it very clear na nasa realm of faith and morals ang ituturo niya at hindi sa kung ano-anong field like science, sports, or politics. And the last condition, he makes explicit pronouncement that this teaching is binding to the whole church. With this condition, lilinawin talaga ng Pope na it's a teaching that every Catholic must believe and adhere to. Just like what Jesus told to Peter, whatever you bind on earth will be bound in heaven. When all four conditions are met, then we can be assured that papal infallibility has been exercised. Siguro maganda kumuha tayo ng example. Ang magandang example of papal infallibility is when Pope Pius XII proclaimed the dogma of the Assumption of the Virgin Mary. In paragraph 44 and 45, ito ang sabi niya. By the authority of our Lord Jesus Christ, the blessed apostles Peter and Paul, and by our own authority, we pronounce, declare, and define it to be divinely revealed dogma that the Immaculate Mother of God, the Ever-Virgin, having completed the course of her earthly life, was assumed body and soul into heavenly glory. Hence, if anyone, which God forbid, should dare willfully to deny or to call into doubt that which we have defined, let him know that he has fallen away completely from the divine and Catholic faith. In this statement, after invoking the authorities of Jesus Christ and the apostles Peter and Paul, Pope Pius was invoking the papal authority as the supreme leader of the church, made it clear that he intends to teach, and that this teaching is related to faith and that every Catholic should adhere to this teaching and not deny it. Once all these conditions were met, then we can conclude that papal infallibility was exercised and that the Holy Spirit preserved this dogmatic statement from any error. Papal infallibility relating to dogmas were only invoked two times in the history of the Church. Yung example na binigay ko kanina, which is the dogma of the Assumption of the Blessed Virgin pronounced by Pope Pius XII in 1950, while the other one was the dogma of the Immaculate Conception pronounced by Pope Pius IX in 1854. So there you go guys, I hope you enjoy kayo sa video na ito and uh, sana may natutunan kayo. So may possibility kaya na in the future may mga future popes na mag exercise ng papal infallibility? I don't know. Pero we as Catholics should know what papal infallibility is para naman pag may mga taong nag-accuse na lahat ng sinasabi ng Pope is uh, Catholic dogma or Catholic belief, may correct natin sila. And we can tell them what papal infallibility is and that not everything the Pope says is infallible. So that's all guys. So if you like this video, please don't forget to subscribe to my channel, click the notification bell, like this video, and share this video with your friends. Share this event with your non-Catholic friends para makita naman nila kung gano'ng kaganda ang mga turo sa loob ng Catholic Church. And once again, this is Terence and I'm from, and I'm here in Rome. As you can see, that behind me is St. Peter's Basilica and I am in St. Peter's Square and all faithful Catholics are in here wandering around.
and this is Canada A. <laughs> Bye!